back in this bitch, uh Know we full attack in this shit, uh You know the full Mac came equipped, uh So promise you We are now in Hoochie Daddy season Hoochie Shores, she call me a Hoochie Daddy, yeah, yeah Hoochie Shores, she call me a Hoochie Daddy, yeah, yeah Hoochie Shores, she call me a Hoochie Daddy, yeah, yeah Hoochie Shores she call me a hoochie daddy. Yeah, yeah, I need a hoochie mama. When they ain't with all the drama, yeah. she wear coochie colors of the romp. Yeah. Fuck a circle, throw it in a romp. Yeah. Button up with the donut with these shorts. Three inches of butter and knees. Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 podcast where we always keep it 100. We're your host, Harrison. Thanks. And this has been a special inaugural season for all our hoochie daddies out there. That's right. If you heard that jam, that means we are starting our hoochie daddy season, right? That means, ladies, shut it up. If y'all want to, y'all can slut us out all season. That means we need y'all to throw us on the bed and throw these hoochies to the side. All you big, long, short niggas, shut up because we are not talking to you. That means we are out here showing out that thigh meat. That's all the squats we've been doing, all them dead lifts that you see on House of Highlight and Bleacher Reports, clinging four million pounds. This is the summer for you. Ain't no more saggy and baggy. Ain't no more wearing Ty Lawson's 8XL shorts and everything. We are in them hoochie daddy. So we need y'all to show up with them short white tees with the neck poked out and them hoochie daddy season. So how is it, my guy? How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. I'm going to go with the conservative hooch. Uh, I know you like to be extra hoochie, but I got my conservative seven inch inseam going on. I like my hoochie 1738. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, how's everything hanging with you, man? Everything's been good, man. Uh, I'm happy to to make an uh, appearance on the show. I know you've been holding it down for a while, and I thought I'd come bless you. Some, some of that good game that we've been talking about dropping some of that good knowledge man uh man it's been a it's been a good good i don't know what it i don't know what you want to call it it's been a good year I, I can say that it's been a i was talking to somebody at work today i am i'm not in a stressful place i'm not in a like miserable place i am bored i was cleaning out the closet this weekend when i sent you the picture of like all the shoes you never sent me the picture of the them in the case I don't have the case. Oh, I thought you said that's what was happening. No, I said I don't have enough space in the closet. I have enough space in the closet for it, but it's just going to be cluttered because I have too many clothes in the closet. But I was if uh, I was cleaning up the closet and I was taking all my shoes out. And so when I was cleaning up my closet, I just looked at all the shoes I got on the floor and I came to my realization, like, I don't think I'm buying any more shoes because... I got all these shoes and I'm not like able to go anywhere. And um, I was just like, I'm at that age where like I am bored. Like I am like bored, 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 bored. Like I'm not going anywhere, any right thing, right? I'm not going anywhere right now. I'm like just at the crib. I go home, I go work, I go hoop. I I just, I, I know prices and stuff like with inflating and, you know, it's more expensive to go places, gas. Yeah, it's getting um, outrageous. Exactly. People are moving, and right now, Virginia is finally kind of starting to settle into that place to where it's too far for me to actually kick it with everybody. Um, I'm watching the games at night, and there's nobody here to watch the games with or go kick it. Uh, all my homeboys that were here on the ship, the ship is now deployed. I'm off that piece of shit. Um, they're not here, or people that were, I was cool with, they're at different parts of the country. So, you know, I'm watching the game by myself. Ain't nobody at my crib, you know, watch the game. So um, it's just like, you know, there's nowhere to go out to. And like I said, you're not, I got, the, you're not the go to the go to the, the bar or the sports lounge type. No, nah, I, ain't, I ain't never been that type of nigga. Sports bar. Um, no, nah, it's not even. No, nah, I just never been that type of like if, if I don't want to like just like I go out by myself all the time. That's not really an issue. I've never cared about that. It's just like. Like, I would go out with a group of people, like, you know, go to B-dubs or go somewhere and, like, we go kick it. But it's, like, either them pe- people are gone or, like I said, it's just I'm on board. And I, I'm looking at all these shoes. I'm looking at all these clothes. And I'm just like, man, I have not thrown together an outfit or nothing. And I'm just, yeah, man, I'm, yeah, I'm just, like, bored. And I'm just looking at all these shoes. And I'm looking at fours ain't been stepped in. I'm looking at um 
Air Maxes I've worn like two or three times. I'm looking, I'm looking at basically the floor is covered. And I'm like, why? And so I was just like, man, this is, I'm like, man, I'm just really, I don't, and it's not a midlife crisis because I'm like, I'm not trying to do things outside of my means to be younger. I don't mind doing things in my age. age right? Yeah, age, right? it's just, what is there to do? And it's not like my friends are out busy doing their own lives. It's just life at this time for me is at a weird time for where I'm available to do stuff and people are not or the distance is too far and too expensive to do stuff to include everybody you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like even when i went to nashville most recently it was like i had clothes to go out but then i'm like hey i'm here and it's either nothing to do or niggas don't want to do nothing you know what i mean so it's like well damn if i could dress up or go out like let's just go to this place i'm like well damn i i i i got i want to put on something to go out somewhere like you know that's why i'm not taking pictures that's why i'm not doing this or that is because y'all don't want to go out you know i'm like i want to i take a thought picture any type of day but i mean where i'm gonna go where i'm gonna go taking i'm wearing the same shirt like multiple days like not the same shirt but the same type of like regular t-shirt you know so i just had that to where it was like man i am just really really bored Mm -hmm. or i'm playing the game all the time you know i don't know it's just that was me cleaning and i was just like man this is really really sucky too much to where i'm giving too much of my invested emotion on people's thought process and shit on social media that's where i notice where i'm at some of the stuff and some of the things like you know we'll discuss just like where i mean we could jump into one like one of the things like we were talking about the the disconnect of like the generation stuff. I was telling I remember we were talking about what happened earlier uh with Hurricane Chris and yeah. just it seemed like it's a big generational gap between us and the new kids being 20 years old now. Um I just noticed me being online with social media and I, I look at a lot of stuff where being 20 now to looking at a 30 year old just seems a lot vastly different now than it, it did 12 years ago when I was 20 and it's just it seems like the only thing different from them and now it's like these niggas have a encyclopedia with a couple words and everybody got a therapist on dial but it seems like everybody learns what the definition of respect is and put it into an interpretation and then also there's a the phobia for everything yeah you know, i feel like um what did seem to disappear was the dissolving of urn everybody feels like they're old nobody's oh, earned okay. yet. everybody feels like now in 2022 i'm earned because i'm a person your respect or anything i'm earned as a person without having i'm old as a person i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm old as a person yeah. without having earned anything and i think me and you talk about this a lot when we look at clout chasing and um how like you know a house of highlights posts stupidity and encourages it encourages it i said it right and yeah. like, like especially with the sports with the young boys playing football and i know that pisses you off to the max when like that one boy who i guess he had his phone on him and he was recording himself making a play and i ain't never heard of that nowhere else outside of this generation to make a move like that to put your because and i was telling you like i was really surprised how he even got his phone because the refs are on you about all types of stuff on your person so that was really beyond me how he got his phone now but like you were saying house of highlights any other publication they do a lot of highlighting of just the foolery that that the younger generation is doing that's probably another reason why we're like man what is, is this real you know i have to ask myself that a, a lot of the times like 90 percent of the time i'm like is this real or is this a skit and i feel like i have gotten lost in the sauce of what's real stuff on the internet and what's a skit so i default to everything is a skit yeah that's just like, like i said it is it's so it seemed like they sped up also our thought press process of being like the elder statesman i feel more inclined to like a charles barkley or a shack at 32 than i do 
than I should when them supposed to be dirt old niggas. And because it's like, like I said, it's just so irritating. I've never seen a more entitled generation. And another thing that I was talking, we were talking about when we were watching that Dr. Phil, entitlement comes so much. This, this, this generation doesn't get, they have an ease of access that the older generation didn't get. And it's like this generation needs to look at the older generation pre mental health push as the generation before computers. You ever dealt with somebody who doesn't know technology? They suck at computers. But people who are good at computers maybe suck at industrial or handiwork computers. I'm sorry, uh, mowing the grass, changing vehicles, all that type of stuff. Yeah. It seems like it's foreign, but somebody handy, it seems like it's natural. Building, fixing stuff around the house, but you know, you put them in front of a computer, they don't get it. It's the same with the mental health era. You're able to get you're able to get that wedge easier and figure out what you need to do. And it's also if you if you're able to accept mental health, you're able to accept the new communities, you're able to accept what's going on. And it's making it to where it's that they they done got so aware they forget that not everybody has an ease of access of these things and it's kind of like i think this is why it's an agenda because the niggas that are older only niggas that kind of get it are the professional teachers not the outside looking in i think this is where they failed the mental health kick the one thing that they seem to fail when they were teaching this whole mental health thing is perseverance goes right with mental health I think that with a lot of times, this is where mental health and basketball or any sports are synonymous. Okay. A lot of the times, mental health is just like a basketball game and just like Skip and Shannon. They can tell you everything that's going on after the game or during the game or comment during the game. But like life, at the time of it, you – what, what were you thinking? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Man, my mind was here. After the game, you could break it down. Or even leading into the game, i.e. If, before you have kids. This mm -hmm. is my game plan. When you have them, you have to scrap the book. Or if somebody comes in with a game plan different than how you prepare for the team, you got to change and adjust as it goes. And then when it comes to it, like let's say you don't get the call you want, you can't be frustrated during it you have to move on and don't show any type of psychological or mental uh frustration during the game because your opponent will use that against you i.e life you can't be frustrated because your job will use that against you you get frustrated you get fired those are the things that they don't tell you or i don't know what they do i'm not gonna say they don't tell you these are the things that they're not pushing yeah when they tell you about this mental health stuff it's cool to go see therapy but a lot of the times you have to persevere so she has the perseverance she doesn't have the mental health part the newer kids have the help mental health they don't have the perseverance they go hand in hand mm -hmm. and this is why i feel like it's going to fuck up on the back half just like we say all the time where these kids aren't getting disciplined like we are now we over coddled and we'll yeah. see the back half nobody's gonna be perfect it's how you persevere could you go through jail kicking this bullshit mm -hmm. could you go through the game showing this type of talk in these situations where people know that you're in your feelings like this no you get taken advantage of because you can't mm -hmm. that's a weakness to some you get what i'm saying like this part of the game and i don't think that people know that this is part of the game of showing weakness it's almost showing your hand when mm -hmm. you're so pro one subject that people know that this is how you manipulate that's just a me thing and I think that's what like a big disconnect is with us older generation and the younger generation, because everything is a phobia. Everything is a tobia. Everything is a this and a that. We were bullied. We were we were something. We had to persevere through school. You know, our parents didn't believe us was happening. I don't know. I don't know. So don't quote me on the numbers. I don't feel like the suicide rating was as high. We had people kill ourselves, kill themselves and stuff. But I don't think the suicide rating was as high. I know there was a lot more fighting. I know there was a lot more bullying. But I just don't think that the problems that we had in school were as bad. We had shitty school periods. 
But I think that because of these things and because we learn how to engineer ourselves, we just made it. We made ourselves tough. We wanted our kids to be able to talk to us. Mm-hmm. And in turn, we made them tell too much. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think when you take the training wheels off, you're supposed to let them ride the bike. Right. I think we held them too long. And I think this is the back half of it. You can go ahead. Right. No, I mean, we've, we, and we've talked about this off uh, air about the children uh, that's going to inherit this earth and how just backwards a lot of the thinking is. And I don't, it's, we talked. So my point is that I feel like the kids need to go through something in order to have to basically have a testimony. I don't really know if a lot of these children have like a true testimony like their predecessors did, uh, i.e. what you were saying with with Miss Stanton and her background of, of, of having people incarcerated, having been a rape victim, uh, being a single parent, raising four kids, um, really struggling in that really massive way just so the kids don't have to, just so the kids can sit up on TV and tell her how she's been, uh, a, I guess, you know, for lack of a better term, like a bad parent. For her to have gone through the ringer on her end, just to make sure these kids are uh, sustainable, can do for themselves, um, the whole thing, for them to sit up and, and well, mama, you don't, um, you don't, you know, you need to you need to go get counseling. The, the children are telling the adults <laughs> what needs to be done after an adult having a intensely hard life. <clears throat> did it? I'm I'm sure she probably spent some nights crying or whatever. But I'm I'm I would like to think she probably didn't cry in front of them. You know, I'm pretty sure she spent a lot of nights wondering, asking God, what's wrong? Why why me? A lot of existential crisis type of things. I'm pretty sure none of the kids knew that, right? But they get to come up in situations where, you know, and not to say every child is coming up in a situation that is cake. Um, but I think for the amount of talking that a lot of the children do, it's just telling that you really haven't experienced anything. Um, and that's really been my biggest issue with the this this upcoming set of, of kids is that they have not been through anything but they want to tell you about everything. Just think that, like we said, it's just the same with the teacher. Like, it's, 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 just, a, it's just a shift of balance. Like we said, you know, it's nothing. They feel like nothing's earned. They feel like they're in the driver's seat because they're the front. They're the spearheads of this new mental movement. And you could tell by the way that they react to stuff that they're not ready for this wave of, you know what I think it is? I don't think they really know who's really in control yet. Plain and simple. Yeah. As much as the media try to play it or like social media, these I don't think they really know who's in control yet. They don't. And, and it's it is not any of these people that they think that are getting canceled or all these things that they think they're shutting down and all this other stuff. I just they'll learn when who's in control and like who who's really signing these checks over. I would just really hate for them to get to a place, though, where they (laughs) when we try to give them keys and we try to give them game about how things are. And I'm I'm open to accepting changes and accepting pivots and things like that. But that, that we have to be having a dialogue. And I don't know if we're really ready for a dialogue or if we're just having monologues. Right. I don't know if they just want to talk to hear themselves talk, which I found is the case most of the time. Um, Mm -hmm. Instead of having true back and forth, let's like really sit down and be, you know, young adults or whatever, whatever, you know, they want to classify themselves as. I don't know. I don't know how successful that would be because there would just be this like energy there that says like, even though I'm 10 years your junior, I've, I've read enough books and I think that I know what I'm talking about, or I, I, you know, in these scenarios and, you know, and it's like, it's, you got to experience some more life. That's one thing I've learned from getting older and having all these theories and these ideas about how, how things should play out. 
um, I've had to really just discard that type of thinking. I mean, man, there are so many different variations of how some stuff could go. And it took me living through them to understand that all that stuff I was talking about. Yeah, it was it was cool. It sounded good, but none of it was practical. You know, none of it, none of it was sustainable. I couldn't do, you know, stuff for a very long time under that type of thinking. And so I had to adjust. And when we try to talk to them about making those adjustments or taking those things, taking certain things into consideration, it's like they look at us <laughs> and then you get, you know, you get with the wrong uh, senior uh, type of person and they just don't want to fool with you. Know what? You know what? What? One, one, my one point and then we can move on. I understand why you've probably met this type of black person, a black man in particular, who is just so no, no nonsense. He was rude, right? Like you, you would tell him like, hey, man, OG or whatever you call, you know, the elder statesman in your city. Uh, what about this? Or what were your thoughts on this? Or why did you do this? And then he would just be so ornery and cranky and cussing and giving you all this lip. And like, why are you at like he would pose questions back to you, all type of stuff. I get it now. Kevin Samuels. I, I get why they talked to us like they did. You know, for a long time, I didn't understand like why you had to be so mean. Like I, I was watching a, for a, the perfect example of this is um, if anybody has the free time to go watch Dick Gregory on The Breakfast Club. OK, Charlemagne is really trying to like talk to him and all this stuff. Dick Gregory is not having it. He's not entertaining goofy questions. He's not answering setups. He is giving it to Charlemagne just how it needs to be given. And I know Charlemagne respects the the elder that is uh, our transition brother in Dick Gregory. So, of course, he was just like kind of sitting there. But, you know, I, I see why. I, not that I agree with the delivery at all, but I understand like you could just be so fed up with a with, with a people, with a group of people that, you, you know, it's every time they ask you something, they just sound stupider and stupider. Yeah, I just like I said, it's just I don't know. It's it's I don't I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if it's just a wave of just the disconnect or this entitlement. I don't know what it is. I just and I I get that even from dealing with Zay sometimes. It's just like like I, I've talked to Darius about this. It's like, bro, we giving you free game, and I just don't get what it. I can understand if we was that much far apart in age, and you didn't think I knew what was going on. But you're literally using the stuff that we created. Mm -hmm. Like we created every app and stuff that you own. So you're using our stuff, but you you don't know anything. So it, it is what it is. I guess to move on. Another thing I wanted to also check myself on. I know um, I was telling you earlier, I was like, I felt like I got myself in this mode to where. And I need to stop making it apparent to everybody. I feel like this is probably a gift and a curse. I don't know if you want to call it that, but um, I need to kind of hone in a part of me that goes out of my way to make sure if somebody meets me, I show them the type of character I am. And I feel like at times it could come off as like I'm going out my way just to make sure that my actions seem genuine. And I feel like for a minute, you know, like I would go overboard just to go out my way just to show like what type of person I was to like a lot of people, whether it would be just kind of supportive or whether it be listening, multiple things, whatever it was. And I just felt like, you know, I was getting to a point where I felt like I was chasing people just so it wouldn't seem like I was and I didn't care about like if it whether it was friends or anything. I just felt like I was chasing people, whether it was just to show that I was authentically being myself, because it's like you got to be consistent to where, you know, because consistency is key. And I caught myself and I looked at myself and like, what the fuck am I doing? And I noticed this is one bad thing about people, you know, that you'll go out your way to basically perk up or hype up or give yourself to people who do not reciprocate the same type of energy to you, you know, uh, you know, I want to take this time to give out, you know, some, you know, day one people like uh, Tino Trim, uh, Erg Weeks, um, Brandon, uh, Glenn from I'm Just Saying Podcast, uh, Danielle 
from Girl What, a bunch of people that, you know, like, day ones, like, people ain't switched up. People just supportive. And this ain't just, like, podcast-only type thing, but it's just, like, you know, just in general. I, I caught myself, and I wasn't like I was – um it wasn't like I was just for podcast purpose, just in general. I just, it's not that I'm again, sucker in myself. It's, I may go out my way to show that this is my character, that it seems like I'm chasing. And I told myself, I don't need to chase anything. If this is not something, then you seen what it is, you'll fall out or you miss the wave. And I need to know when to know, when the audition is shown and when to walk away that's what that's the, what the famous line of it is i need to know when the audition tape has been shown gail as well uh cam Dorm, you know all just so sabrina know my mom like all these people like supportive you know what i'm saying like i wanted to get those people like people have been and i'm chasing folks i just want to make sure i said names i could think of but i need to cut my audition tape for people of my character that i feel like are not abusing it because you can't abuse something unless I allow it. Mm-hmm. But I've let my audition tape overrun its generosity. I think that's something I'm going to work on. Mm-hmm. Because I've been trying to be authentic too much to show that it's not me doing something for your keeping. This is just who I am on a day to day. And I feel like I there's other ways for me to do that. And if you want to be a board, that's cool. If not, go about your business. I'm going to still be me. You'll know other ways about it. So I wanted to get that out. Um, what's I been the to, What's been the feedback that you've gotten that brought you to this realization of like you need to cut your audition tape short? I don't like, think well, it's been the feedback. I think it's what I, I do. I don't think it's been the feedback that I get. I think it's what I do, and I notice that it's me doing something that is not reciprocated the whole way, the tenfold. You know, like. We can go for podcast purposes, right? Um, again, I wasn't doing this for promo or anything, but let's just say I go out my way to promote plenty and plenty of plenty and tag and plenty and plenty of shows. Mm-hmm. I don't, and ninety percent of the people don't do it back. Mm-hmm. I listen to whoever you know. What I'm saying niggas don't say anything or whatever, and and don't respond back or don't even hit the like button or whatever that's fine because Mm -hmm. my shit is still doing numbers i i know what my counts are so Mm -hmm. these same niggas i've either brought on liked put on the story whatever that's fine i know what my count is yeah i have people that interact and listen to my shit daily or weekly Mm -hmm. we interact we do stuff and I say thank you, but then I'll still go out my way and do other stuff just to make sure because I don't want to make it seem like I'm going to stop because somebody's not doing it. That's the part where I don't want to make it seem like it's bothering me. That's why I haven't stopped because I would have stopped a long time ago. You get what I'm saying? So I don't want to cut it because it's bothering me because it's not bothering me like that, but you feel like you don't know when the cut line is. Yeah. But you, does that make sense? Like, yeah, it, it and well, at least my take on what you're saying is that you don't know when to cut it short and you don't. So is it you don't know how they'll respond if you cut it short? I don't care about how they respond. I think okay. I want to put more focus into the niggas that are actually yeah, okay. rocking. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like I'm putting too much into trying to appease everybody. Yeah. And doing too much and then going out my way for motherfuckers who aren't. And I'm not putting more into, not saying I'm not putting into it, more into mm-hmm. the motherfuckers that are giving me the drive to go on and on. I'm okay. putting, I'm putting the same, the motherfuckers who You're trying aren't, to water the plants that's growing. Exactly. The motherfuckers who aren't doing it are getting the same water as the niggas who are making this shit fun. Yeah. And I think that that shit need to be tossed to the side. Right. And, you know, and that go with life, work and anything. You know what I'm saying? I just use the podcast as an example, but I think that I need to check myself on what am I considering support? 
Mm-hmm. That's yeah, a mental so. health thing about me. You know, you say it all the time. What am I considering support? Mm-hmm. Is it, am I recognizing it when I'm getting it and appreciating it? Or am I doing this for recognition of particular people? Mm-hmm. Because I'm getting it. Is Or is it not enough because it's not by particular? So that's why oh, I had okay. to check myself. Yeah, I'm getting exactly what I want. So why am I still doing X, Y, and Z? Like, um, Julius hit me up on an email to come on from Toxic Tangent Podcast. I didn't even really think about it. I was like, damn, people still do look up our show and think we're great. Mm-hmm. He's six months in, and they look at us. That's flout. That's shit to shine on. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, we're that's us. He go back to when me. You start, that's us. You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, paying that's for, paying for promo. <laughs> <laughs> this is a free this is a free this is a free you know toxic tangent podcast y'all check it out but like that's like we've done we've done that we've been them niggas you know what i'm saying like we've established that type of ground why not why am i going out my way to do more than i have to mm-hmm. for other niggas why don't i just relish in my success and toast to the niggas i want at my party you know what i mean that was just something i right. was just no, and I just think that's just something I'm taking a life. That was, was something I really thought, like, man, you got to really cut this shit out. Mm-hmm. You know that because um, what's the like? Let's say, like, let's say this is Isaiah, and you talking to him about this same incidents, but it's school related, right? So what, 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 what are you trying to protect yourself from or protect him from if if he's going through this or you know? I think because I right now I still know me. I still know James. And I think at a certain point, you get used. You'll take anything. And if I could be reflective on, if I get reflective on what I've known from the past is, is basically like, let's just say you're in a relationship with a girl and the girl's treating you like shit every day. And on one day out of 30 days, she says, I missed you. And they don't answer your calls for 29 days. Mm-hmm. You'll take that. Mm. So that's a self-worth. Uh, basically, basically, it's like a self-evaluation. And you're and, you know, I'm telling myself as I do this. Can't nobody say that you changed up on them. And what the fuck does that matter? You know what I'm saying? So that and that's what I'm and that's what I just wanted to make sure like my as long as I've been consistent. That that was what the whole drive was like, just stay consistent to you. Mm-hmm. You get what I mean? And I yeah. need to stay consistent to who my character is. I don't I don't have to change up. I don't think I need to use you or have you using me for promo or what. And I'm not saying that's what you getting, but I don't need you to use me for, you know, for whatever it is while I get nothing you're not supposed to be doing this for that i just think that at a certain point i i need to you know walk away from that point of allowing myself to be too nice Mm -hmm. and i think that was something i need to go and you know one thing i've worked on that and i worked on like you know working through forgiveness you know that used to be like a no-go for me but that lockdown situation and you know uh what my mom and all them went through that you know i just i really had to kind of like look at myself in the mirror and i was just like if you are going to sit here and preach you can't really say and hold people to a standard that you wouldn't hold yourself to as i sit here right you gotta have integrity exactly as i sit here and say people have been in my corner you know and this goes to my mom this goes to sabrina people i've had bouts and bouts with i was in a bad spot where those two beautiful women individually handled situations for me that i am appreciative of when we weren't speaking period and i i would understand completely if they didn't do it at all because i said i didn't want to continue mother Mm -hmm son you know and without any question they handled it so 
for them to be able to step aside and do something when I needed it, you have to be able to check yourself in the mirror and be like, when you say that you can move past something, it's not about going back to what or even to the expectation of what somebody wants. I think you can move on and forgive somebody and keep it amicable as long as the common goal is set in standard of let's just keep it you know what i'm saying like let's just get it to a point and build it from this point up yeah and i think if you start it from there and go from without without rehashing yeah i think that's where it was if it can build just, in like proper boundaries exactly and just make beginning. it and just make it from there i go from there but i think from also at a certain point I have to check myself. If somebody's willing to meet me somewhere, I'm willing to go to the same place. I'm always about effort. So those were just certain things I've, you know, been um just been working on. You know, like I'm not perfect. I tell people all the time, like, and I think that's one thing that I have to really had to really get to them. If I have an outburst with them, it's not sudden. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it's just the only time you pay attention to me. Mm-hmm. So it's is you know it's like i said it's just certain points in my you know my life i just have really just been kind of like really sitting here and just, you feel like you're at peace am i at you peace? said at the top you said at the top you know you you're in a really good space and you're stress-free yeah. correct um i don't like being stress-free because i've put on weight so i feel like <laughs> i need i feel like if somebody want to bring some drama in my life <laughs> it's, it's hoochie it's daddy it. it's hoochie it's hoochie daddy season now i don't i don't i don't i don't i think i call it a sinus infection so you know i'm back you know back you know where i need to be for hoochie daddy but i can go for another eight so if somebody want to bring some unnecessary stress in my life uh a past fling a past flame um uh, if somebody want to bring any type of drama have me not eaten for a couple of days um <laughs> It's hoochie daddy season, so I want my I want my hoochie shorts on. So if you want to, I'll allow it. Usually I say save it for your mama, but uh, Erica Johnson will approve of it. Um. <laughs> so you were saying earlier uh, when we were talking about like I guess the younger generation coming up about how they act like they don't know what things mean. I know recently the Pivot Podcast, which is a podcast of former athletes Ryan Clark. Um, my boy Shannon Crowder and Fred Taylor, um, all football players. They, you know, their show, they talk about a range of things. They have athletes on. They have different people on, different personalities. And one of the, I guess, hot takes for a second was, you know, when Channing um, called Russell uh, Wilson a lame or square, I'm sorry, called him a square. Lying, man. Then the internet erupted in a way that was so odd to me because he said a lame. He said she said over his future, good dude, don't know him, he ain't a crack yet. But as far as who he was personally, like mm-hmm. off the field, was yeah. a lame. Not as a father, but as a right. lame. He was a lame individual. And, Compa- and it wasn't compared to future. Yeah. It was just as a individual. Yeah. Right. And I think we're at this space where everybody has an opinion because they have a platform or they had that, that device in their hand. So they feel like uh, that's I want to say like we all sometimes sometimes it kills me. Like we feel like we all had the same experience growing up. And then at the same time, I feel like who are any of y'all like y'all were never. It's like people and maybe maybe he shouldn't have said square or whatever. But then again, that's his prerogative to use whatever adjectives he wants to use to describe somebody, um, especially in the same field that he was in. <laughs> y'all niggas like, said fat phobic. So y'all fat motherfuckers wouldn't lose weight. So <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand why we don't get when somebody says uh, the things that they say. And then they have to go around and do this like cleanup committee, you know, type of response to it. But we all especially culturally with my boy yes, sir. let's go we in the orange baby let's go let's ride baby Ooh, let's clean ride. Right. Now, well we know what we done i have my boy Drew. <laughs> i got one for with me hey hey, hey. hey. <laughs> yes, sir, so what we gonna do yes, sierra yes, hit him with a little bit of that sierra hit him with a little bit of that promise 
I now will never love. Oh, it's nothing I won't do. Oh man, to bring that blackness out of you. Listen, Berlin braids and boots. I promise you who ride boo yeah anyway my point wrap my point up it was basically we act like we don't understand culturally what it means when a black person calls another black person a square or a lame and then you know we got to go through this whole uh backstory or whatever i feel like this if you are using i feel like at this point channing probably like 40 some years old russell is 30 some years old you know what i mean i don't we i think it's safe to say that we moved out of high school versus a lame and corn you know we we are talking about just as a guy would you and he said this on the breakfast club i would not go out and have a drink with him i would and, and in other words we couldn't kick it because our personalities don't mesh but who wants to say all that when you could just say he's corny he's a cornball he's a square i don't we don't have things in common like that's to me that's what that means right I'm not going to go out and hang with you if I feel like we don't have anything in common. We can't talk about none if you're a weirdo, if you're an oddball. I mean, does he get that kind of slack if he says those things, too? I'm trying to figure out how many videos is it of Russell Wilson without Sierra. <laughs> I just, I just, I just, we're I don't gonna, know. We're not going to also sit up here and act like Russell Wilson, the, an, the antics and the way he talks has not been noticed, like, universally amongst black people. With him, to, you know, the, like, come on, Russ. Like, this is it's hilarious. Like, I don't think anything of Russ. I just think it's funny. Broncos country. That's right. Broncos country. That's right. <laughs> and I'm like, is he is he bringing that to the like? Because nobody said that before, right? Or no? Okay, I didn't know if that was like a Broncos fan based. I don't know. Before. It's just funny because is is. Clearly, the funniest part to me when it first came out is because niggas was like, who keep giving these niggas platforms? The pivot was doing a million views. Clearly, y'all just don't watch it because it's about sports. Just say that. Right. Second, right. Off, <laughs> second off, they his peers. Third, it is strictly off the field. Ain't nobody talking about him being a father or anything. And on top of that, the shade room minimally raised over this part when he said that part about 2016 which i forgot about this till ryan clark brought it up when he said that part about all lives matter and shit and nobody was fucking with russell then right. but when he get with sierra and everything all his life changed he started wearing braids his voice got a whole different dialect to it yes and even fred taylor said like i'm cool with russ i invite him to the bar but everybody else won't so i don't know why motherfuckers act like because they will hang out with him I'm sorry, they don't hang. He's a great player. You could be a cold motherfucking basketball player, and then as soon as the game's over, you don't speak to him after the game is over. I think people don't realize that the people that are defending him are women, are mother, or people that look at him as a father figure. Ain't nobody talking. We're talking about a nigga to play 2K with, right? Not right. somebody to be around your kids. How he is with Russell, uh, I'm sorry, well, damn. With future, little future is great as a father figure. Nobody's talking about him as a father figure. They're talking right. about him when the game is over and it's time to go kick it. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's. Uh, I f if you're going to Magic City, right. and he's time to throw one. He want to throw quarters. Y'all forget about that picture, that famous picture when he first got with Sierra and he was standing outside the plane in that uh, Hawaii shirt. So let's not act like. It's two different things. And that video of him, my boy, yeah, you know how I do I have come out here and talk. Boy, he sound like Gunner. So come on now. <laughs> come on. Three, now this nigga, yeah, come on now. This nigga out here pushing C. So it's just, it's, it's just, that's the part where niggas is complaining. But that comes back to like niggas just don't read. Like it's just, you right. don't watch the show. You don't see. Yeah. It's, it's just, that was our like. I oh, felt yeah. like when you to go back to the Stanton thing for a second, when that clip was going viral of her yelling at her daughter, um, you was like, hey, send me the whole thing. And I feel like that's what's lost right now. Nobody either wants to make the time or whatever. They don't want to watch. They don't want to read. They don't want to watch the whole anything. 
they just want oh that clip that the the twenty second clip with that black woman yelling at that black you know her trans uh, daughter. Then let's let's do that. And let's make all the comments. Shave room. Get it. Get it. Get it. Uh, get it ready to go. Bossip. Get it ready to go. Whoever Hollywood. And it Hollywood. made the and it made the daughter look crazy. And and she wasn't. It, and it wasn't as bad as it seemed. The mother ended up looking worse on the Doctor Phil episode even though it's chopped and screwed, I guess, to their parts. But then the mother wasn't technically right as the video made her seem. It was just that one clip they chopped up. It was even that one. Did you see that video with uh, Saucy Santana on The Breakfast Club? When when, when they brought dude like, on hey. there? Yeah. yeah. And they only showed the one part on Shade Room when they were trying yeah. to fuck over Sa- Charlemagne. Yeah. But then they left off the part where the guy was like, Oh, I think he's funny. Yeah, I like I like watching like, the videos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then he said at the time, and he was like, uh, "I like how gay niggas and regular niggas fuck with me because I think I'm entertaining." And the guy and Charlamagne said on his podcast, like they be chopping up to make it seem like I said more than what I didn't, or they won't play the whole clip. No one Instagram can play more than a minute clips, right? But he said they'll chop it up on purpose, so that's why he said he'll go post the entire clip. Because they'll post it and run it as if he didn't post the clip prior with the entirety of the clip. So because you need the whole context, because they only post sound bites. This is an aside. When, as a society, black society, when are we going to pull the plug on publications like that? That's just a genuine question. Like I don't, you know, it, it always just seems to be more damaging than helpful. Um, I don't know. You tell me. I don't. I don't follow the shade room. I see them in my feeds, you know. And you send me stuff, um, but I just don't understand. Like I do understand from like a business standpoint and viral, you know. But when it comes to you know that on on there, I know they do a lot of promotions, and but obviously you got to pay for those promotions. Um, so I don't know. I just I just feel like they they are real. And I mean, you've said this a couple times to me, like, I don't, you know, the shade room has been real problematic, um, you know, all that type of stuff. And I mean, I guess we were we were using media takeout before, which, I, you know, what's crazy. I felt like we knew media takeout was fake. So that's why it was funny. But with shade room, it's like they have like and we I didn't I didn't feel like media takeout had an agenda. I just felt like it was just like them. It was like it was like those magazines you see when you checking out. Uh, mm-hmm. at the store you know just like aliens came and took you know like stuff like that like, i was abducted and but media i mean um the shade room kind of purports itself as this like legitimate source of specifically black yeah you know, stuff so I, that's just my question i don't know it seems like from the comments it seemed like people been correcting the shade room a lot so i guess yeah. whoever you know the same with media takeout when they had to correct them so whoever i guess gets a hold of them and be like nah this ain't it this ain't it that's kind of like how you take it but okay. i don't know i guess that's how you kind of take them down um now getting to the clips of motherfuckers who ain't have to clip it through i wanted you to hear jack del rio stuff of what he said about comparing george floyd's murder by public lynching and the riots that took place to the capital riots what he said from there did I just get right down, down to it? What did I ask? A simple question. Why are we not looking into those things? If we're going to talk about it. Why are we not looking into those things? Because it's kind of hard for me to say I can realistically look at it. I see the images on TV. People's livelihoods are being destroyed. Businesses are being burned down. No problem. And then we have a dust up at the Capitol, well, there's no, nothing burned down. And we're not going to talk about, we're going to make that a major deal. I just think it kind of two standards. And if we apply the same standard and we're going to be reasonable with each other, let's have a discussion. That's all it was. Let's have a discussion. We're Americans. Let's talk it through. So for people that don't know, that is Jack Del Rio, the Washington commander's defensive coordinator. And so he was following some tweets that he had put out and he backed them up saying that uh, he didn't get why there was uh, a fuss about the comparison or how the comparison of the the January 6th terrorism act by white folks and the George Floyd. Uh, I'm sorry, the commotion at the uh, January 6th terrorism attack on the Capitol that was being brought up, especially with Trump 
being possibly indicted on those charges as well for stirring it up when he tried to bring it up well the george floyd incident caused actual riot in the people's business going up and he called the january 6th up just a dust up he was fined by uh the commanders a hundred thousand dollars to go to the memorial i guess for the capital stuff but um i wanted to ask you your take on that just from uh a nigga whose whole defense is black um <laughs> and just you know america's it's not he ain't the only one but just america's viewpoint of how they really just think that they went on a field trip to the capital <laughs> <laughs> two years a year later two years later so you know i've been thinking about this ever since we kind of brushed over it maybe yesterday or whenever that was and i might go a direction that you probably not expecting so to comment on his take it's just very interesting that in his response of having a civilized conversation that <clears throat> he wants to call the capital riots a dust up but in the same breath highlight the george floyd uprisings as some sort of like evil mechanism that occurred um so that right there is weird to me that you want to try to call yourself having a civilized conversation but clearly heavily you 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 value one incident over the other um now when it comes to like you said his whole defense basically being black if they're not all black um and i read like a short article i don't know if it was i don't know if it was chase young or it was it was one of them basically you know they were asked about it and they said um basically listen i don't care about what he's talking about as far as his political leanings and all that stuff i just need him to show up here every day to coach football and we good to go and i mean you you know you could take that comment however you like but i think one of the things that i've started to continue to build is like empathy so for example I have an aunt who is a heavy <laughs> Trump supporter. I mean, will argue me down about whatever's going on. But it's my aunt, right? Like, I mean, I, I mean, and you you could take the um, obviously a coach and an aunt, you know, family member and a coach. But we just for the sake, <clears throat> somebody that was that is impactful in your life or in your career, right? And she says all these crazy things about Trump and, you know, Black Lives Matter. Basically, she said the basically the same talking points, you know, but you had all these people, Black Lives Matter uprising. And da, da, da. I said, but you do know that there were a lot of infiltrated uh, non-black police officers involved in that. Right. You do know there were a lot of non-black people who were tearing up stuff like let's let's paint the entire picture. Let's not just paint your picture. Um, there was a lot of stuff getting dropped off in certain places that, you know, black people just don't even have access to, you know what I mean? Like, I know, I don't know any black brick masons. I know they're out there, but I'm, I really doubtful that they was really going to drop off the concrete like that. And, you know, the bricks and everything for people to destroy stuff. <laughs> so I, it, anyway, that's, that's just a different part. There are William <laughs> Bartholomew. So uh uh yeah man it's it's me my nigga yeah that's me cuz yeah cuz <laughs> there were just so many instances where there was just obvious infiltration but whatever right so the part of me that is empathetic towards whoever said that you know about i just need him to show up i mean it's it's funny because you you got to think like look at that person that's at your job or that family member or that individual who you know you you really respect in regards to whatever you need from them, right? And are you saying just throw throw all of their experiences away because they just disagree politically or whatever the case? You know, like that's just a question that I ask. You know, do I throw my entire experience with my aunt away? You know, all the things that she's taught me. I mean, literally, like a lot of her, a lot of her insight is like in my. I ain't gonna say DNA, but it's like uh, it's a part of my person now. And I'm just a big fan of. Um, chewing the meat and spitting out the bones, and Jack Del Rio's comments were just bones to me. Like if I was if I was Chase Young or if I was one of those DBs or whoever, right? I just need Jack to uh to come to work, teach me that game, 
um, you know, teach me what I need to know, how to scout, how to do all these things, how to how to perfect myself. Because Jack not going to pull punches out there. Jack wants to win. Right. Like Jack wants to win the game just like everybody else wants to win the game because, you know, when we win, they win and so on and so forth, you know. And so to to bring it back to my aunt, I mean, like, yeah, she says all these crazy things. But at the end of the day, she's going to be the first one to ride up here. You know, if I ever needed something or if Sonya needed something, she's going to be the first one calling, trying to figure out what can be done. She's going to be the first one calling around the city to try to figure out how to move mountains to do X, Y, and Z. So it even kind of ties into what you were talking about, about forgiveness and about just having um, just having uh, a different perspective um, on situations, you know, involving family members or involving work, work personnel. <clears throat> Again, if I, if I had, you know, a, a principle that I just totally, you know, he just said wild things or whatever, but he knew the game. I want the game. You know what I mean? And I mean, it's unfortunate that you might think of those, you know, you might think of things in those ways. I want the game from you so that when it is my time to, to do whatever it is, I, I'm, you know, I'm set to do. I can include all that game you gave me and also inject, you know, my I'm not going to say my agenda, but, you know, what I feel like is right. You know what I mean? Like we don't have to have these type of conversations in that way where you down in a different, you know, when, when you're trying to claim that you're trying to have a, um, uh, a good conversation with somebody, but obviously heavily, you know, leaning towards the right. Um, so, I mean, in, in total, uh, what Jack said was what he said. And, you know, as long as Jack is showing up and not, uh, mistreating his, uh, I mean, I guess you would call them coworkers. I don't really know what you call your. I mean, I, are they coworkers? Just you know, player and coach. Is that a coworker? Uh, you you low. Your players. Okay, so I mean, you know, I I don't I don't know the Jack thing. Yeah, he you know he said what he said, but I I was really most interested in how some of the, his team responded to it, and, they, and I mean, and I and I can see why. So I mean, what about you? What is, what is your take on? Um, I mean, I'm gonna let you rock with that win for a take. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't really feel like being Umar. Honest, I mean, like to an extent, <laughs> like I do. I mean, if you don't fire him, I mean, <laughs> he the one who got coach niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like a right. team full of blacks. I don't want to say like, let me change that up. He the one who got to coach a team full of blacks. So I feel like that that sounds kind of offensive. You got coach niggas. But you don't want to coach a, a, a predominantly African American team after with your stupidity. And if you're not gonna fire him, I mean, I'm not surprised. I don't think he's the only one who said it. And right. find him a hundred thousand. I he strongly. And I wouldn't be surprised if it was some of them players that like felt the same way. I don't. I don't know the black ones, but I just think that's really <laughs> funny for him to think that in DC. But um, I do want to ask you: How do you feel? Like, do you feel like well, all these white folks profiting off of weed? You feel like it's kind of bullshit how you keep seeing black folks taking charges for felonies for like possession of weed. Absolutely. Especially when I mean we've heard this crammed down, we've had this crammed down our throat for the longest time now, especially when we got legalized about how crazy it is that so many of us are locked up for marijuana. Um I'm really trying to figure out what part of weed is illegal. That's what I'm really trying to figure out now. Like <laughs> like the Montrez shit, like I, like when I at this point, if I see a nigga get locked up for weed, I'm like, really? He in the military? Like that's the only thing I could think of. Like the only nigga that should be locked up for weed is military niggas. Like I don't get how. Now I do is. find it odd that, and I'm not. I'm gonna let this be clear. I'm not a weed guy. Like I don't know. So you don't. So you don't smoke. <laughs> but no, I meant like, and I guess I'm not a math guy either, because I really don't even know. Like obviously that's a lot of weed he got caught with. So I guess that was like why so much? Like where you in But then route? you can go to dispensaries and shit. But then you go to dispensaries and shit and buy a whole bunch. So that's why I said what is the leak? Like I look at Duval, Lil Duval. Lil Duval be having cases of the shit. Yeah. Or you go to these dispensaries, they got cases of the shit. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said what is legal? What is the and where is he now? Where was he? Is he, is he what team is he on? Montrez. My, my yeah. I don't know. I think last time I seen him, he was in Charlotte. Okay, okay. So I guess But I'm just know. saying like where is the illegal spot? So what is the legal amount, illegal amount? Like or legal amount? Like, you know, like what is it? I just I just feel like 
I only see black people getting arrested for like felonies for weed. Like I don't like I just feel like that's really fucked up, you know. And every two seconds we talking about TMC, I'm sorry, THC, cannabis inspired, all this, and I yeah, just feel like right. um, we let white folks come in and take our hustle and and put us in jail, not reduce our sentences, and I just I think that's just such a corny, corny um, way to go out, right for. For marijuana, I did want to give you some praise before we. Uh, did you have anything else on it? No, that's fine. That was about it. I did want to give you some praise before you go. Uh, you have a fire ass uh, rap playlist. I appreciate that. The first, the first eight songs that five, you have the only five oh foreign song I've ever listened to. <laughs> um, <laughs> that and that uh, rumor song, shit, boy. I'm telling you, like I will put that. Oh, I'd be saying I don't I know I ain't gonna say how you put it together, but you do not take the songs you got off, just keep updating it and going. And, and so that was something I was struggling with. I was like, do I take off the old one? Because I don't listen to it. After two and a half years, let it because sometimes if you on them rides, then you you need that hour to like when I was on Yeah, you're right. You need it, but if you take them off too soon, like damn, bro, like when they get to older, old oh man, it's hit hit, and then you get to a repetition and then it start back over when it's supposed to, but it you have it perfect before on the R and B one, you took it off too soon. Yeah. And you was supposed was to like, let them ride. These songs anymore or whatever. That's so, what I was yeah. saying, but I was like, nah, fuck that. Because it's it go if you take a trip, it plays out perfect. Or if I'm doing a workout or whatever, it plays out perfect. But that rap one is fucking fire. I will give you that one. Give a give a nigga a praise, man. So uh how come I'm getting no hand claps or no like audio? <laughs> no gunshots. Like we didn't... <laughs> The hand was right by the fucking button. I didn't even really get a chance to get the button out before you There you go. You ready? There you go. Boom. Boom. That's boom. That's not a little weak. Yeah, there you go. There you go. You happy? You want your gunshots? Where's my where's my Jamaican klaxon? I don't even know what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like <that's... laughs> oh, shit. I don't even know what that sound is. <laughs> you know exactly my... what that sound is. That bar, 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 like the horn. Mess your dumb ass. Come on, on all the sound. There you go. That better for you. <laughs> Good old Martin. When is that supposed to come on again? That that uh, family that reunion. Okay, the sixteenth. Oh, did you like the game the other day? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of like, uh, what's happening here? Uh, 30 se- our thirty-second ESPN take. Right, I I didn't know. I uh, clearly, um, what's his name, man? He ain't been relevant for real. Stepped up though. Who? Yeah, Wiggins. 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 Yeah. He stepped up in a big way. Um, I know Skip and Shannon were talking about it. Uh, I mean, and I think the statistics say, you know, whoever wins the next game is going basically close this thing on out um so i mean i'm really pulling for boston but i really have no idea and you you the basketball guy i'm really vague with my you know my take so i just don't know what's happening with them right now i don't know if they're just not playing in sync or what man my 30 my 45 seconds is i really don't know because boston what was killing golden state was the fact that steph was the only one scoring the first couple of games Boston has great ISO players. That's about it. Because the niggas have ISO players and four of the motherfuckers was hitting the first game, nobody else from Golden State was scoring except Steph. But now Tatum and all them is just fumbling. Um, Clay finally getting his shot in. Draymond ain't doing dumb shit as much. And now when it, it, ISO ball helps when Steph is the only one scoring, but when the other niggas are scoring, the ISO ball is shit kind of pointless. Because it seemed like every time Steph would put up 28 points, the rest of the team was ISO and they ass up, and the score was 31 30, uh, 30. So it was kind of like the ISO ball doesn't matter when the ISO ball matters when it is a close game. It doesn't matter when it's not, you know. I'm sorry, the ISO ball doesn't matter when everybody is uh, scoring on Golden State, but it does matter when nobody is scoring on Golden State. So I'm going for, I don't see Boston going out like that. And I think Golden State want to win it at home. Game seven, Golden State, close game, fourth quarter, Golden State blows it out, 
last yeah. three minutes by 15, one, 17 to 102. Game seven. Is that 15 different? Uh, Clay goes off for 27. Curry goes off, seals it with the last go away 10 points. And then the last 17 points is just for fun. Okay. So you think they bring home Curry 38, step, uh, Curry 38, Clay 25 up to the fourth quarter. Curry, Curry takes over. Game seven. Okay. Which they talked about that today that he doesn't he doesn't do well. He um he doesn't he doesn't score. He's not a good scorer in this game sevens that he's been in. He kind and of folds. Steph? Yeah. Steph, I think Steph did. I think he did good. No, they he said Clay is a better game seven guy. Is Clay is a better game six guy. Right, right, you're right, you're right. <clears throat> Steph had yeah. a better game seven. Okay. So, other than that, man, welcome back. The boys are back in town. In temporary. It was just an episode, bro. I just said, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back to the show, bro. Nobody, and nobody say, we'll see you next week, bro. I just, <laughs> I just said, thanks. <laughs> you can edit it. Thanks. <laughs> Fuck you. All right. No, but it's been another episode of the 8492 podcast. We always keep 100 with you. Please. I was trying to hit that timer. Shit. Back in this bitch. Uh, know we full attack in this shit. Uh, you know the full Mac came equipped. Uh, so promise.